Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is the Wix Online meeting number 24 on the 17th of April. We skipped last week because I spent the whole week putting back my website that got hacked earlier that weekend. Not much fun. But anyway, we're back. We have some bugs to get through, and I think Eric sent something he wants to talk about, so we'll cover that in questions, comments. So how about I show the agenda while we're talking about the agenda? Like I said, triage, and then we'll do questions, comments, things like that. Um, Eric sent something. Uh, as a reminder, as always, these are recorded for those people that were unable to uh, make it here at this time slot. Sound good, Bob? I'm ready. All right. It's great. So here we go. Off to triage. As always, if you have other things you want to discuss you know, after triage, go ahead and start tossing them in the comments, and we'll get to them when we get to that part. 14 bugs, which I guess isn't that terribly surprising, given that we skipped a week, although things keep coming in. So, um, first things first. Um, prototyping new idea how to implement the feature, ignore the implementations. There's this concept, I was digging through this, because this guy actually sent a whip along as well um, yep. before we saw this, because this actually snuck by, because I think he opened it directly, which is something I need to go look at not allowing, because we really should talk about these in triage. Um, and he wants some way of making it easier to do repetitive stuff. and. I kind of see what he wants to do with this macro thing. I'm really not excited about more stuff, especially functional type stuff in our declarative world. And I was going through it, and all the examples he's had here, I think can be dozen extensions. So I'm kind of waiting for him to bring this up on the Wix devs mailing list as a, why can't you just do this as an extension? Because all of these things can be done as extensions. Um, and you get yeah, error, it, it, error yeah, handling and all kinds of stuff. That that's that's true. I mean, obviously, an extension is you know a pretty big step up from what he's proposing here, um, because this you can all do at the authoring level. What he's proposing is all authoring. Yeah, I uh, I, I I mean I, I don't disagree with you. I first of all, it seems everything that he wants to do can be done via some kind of XML manipulation. Probably XSLT can do it because it seems to invoke the Elder Gods, at least in its syntax. So I'm assuming it could do something like <laughs> this. Yeah. Um, I, I, so I'm, I'm, yeah, certainly I, I'm, I'm wary of adding something like this to the language. Um, the huge, huge, huge surface area. So anyway, and, and we yeah. have extensions, and I can't remember where they're coming from. And, if this could be done as extension, yeah, he left a comment somewhere, I think, on the whip for when we closed it. Yeah, uh, do a pre processor extension. So he's already looking to do this as an extension. So I think as an extension, it's an interesting thing to try to do it that way. I'm not really thrilled about this as a feature in the Wix tool set all over. I'd rather it just be done as extensions. And honestly, if we get to a set of things that should be done, we should make them extensions and make them generally available. Right, right. Get them solid and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I, I don't want macro expansion stuff in the preprocessor. <laughs> um, no. There's a reason every language other than C has pretty much dropped the uh, macro expansion. The yes. Yeah. All right. So I don't exactly know what to do with this. Um, at a certain level, it's kind of like we need to go talk about it. Um, right. Overall, I'm not excited about the feature. But if it's a processor extension, well, then yeah, go do that. And if there's things the extension should be able that needs to do that it can't do, well, then we should definitely talk about that. Because I always want to know that things that extensions can't do that seems like they should be able to do. Right, right. Um, but I'd like to have this discussed on the mailing list. So how about we just let it hang out for another week and see if he comes around. Yeah, works for me. Next week. Um, bootstrapper install failure. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Yeah, here, I'll, I'll, uh, you, you go into the next one. I'll edit this thing to render. Okay. It's, it's a lot of XML. Do you know why it's not rendering? I'm assuming it's not rendering because it's there's a, a mix. It's all good. So there's some getting rendered as code and some that's not. So I'm assuming if I... Clean it up a bit. Okay, well, we'll go look at this one then. Yeah. Original, Wix bundle original source, split, split into a directory and 
bundle name. Pass to an MSI for further without have to write anything in your BA to do it, or source name, just to have it at hand. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not against it. Uh, it could be done in three X, right? Um, it's additive. Guess, as long as yeah, we're adding. It's additive. Which bundle original source directory? I'm not sure about the bundle name. I mean, do you really still need that? I've, it seems the original, well, and, and maybe. Yeah. Um, it seems that the, yeah, the, the big bang there is being able to get the directory, Yeah. you know, for people wanting to do config files and stuff like that. I, I can see it. I mean, I can see it. Um, the name, yeah, just, just in case, because <laughs> if you don't yeah. do it, someone will want it in the end. Um, and I don't know I call it bundle name I probably call it file name but if you're going to call this directory but anyway um, or call it folder I don't know what you call it directory or folder but anyway <sighs> yeah totally reasonable thing could do it in 3x agreed talk about it when someone gets around to it harvest project references there's already a bug open on this um, yes there is there's been at least five and actually, yeah. Um, sorry, can you open up issue two six three nine? I think that's the duplicate. Two six three nine. I've been here before. Yeah. Yeah. Seems about right. Yeah. Two six three nine. Do you want me to do that one right here since you're hacking on the other one? Or are you going um, to... Yeah, please, go ahead. My resolution. I assume it's duplicate. I haven't even been looking. Yeah, that's what I've been using. There we go. Oh! <laughs> hey, look, it remembered my password. And then I have to hit the double button. One of these days, I'll fix that. All right. And we hit back, and it works. Man, I really like the back just works there. All right. You can go back to the uh, 4377. 4377. All right, very good. Not oh, visible. look at that. You fixed it up nicely. Yeah, it Dialogue. was. Process return error. Oh, that's a funny error. And we interpret it as that. Okay. That's a funny error. What did they do? Uh, I wonder, is that one of the, um, yeah, what do you call it, the .NET uh, special codes? Uh, no. No, did they do this? Yeah, they did this. See what the executable name they're executing is? <laughs> they, they need to at least put a .exe on the end. Yeah. And yep, yep. really, they shouldn't be changing the name anyway. So anyway, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. Don't change that file name to not be an executable file, or yep. Windows won't want to execute it. Ah, uh, that's funny. Okay. Wow. Yeah, don't do that. I don't know how what we would do. Anyway. VS Project Extension, yep, of unique. File ID, generation not unique. When harvesting two files with the same name in two different folders, this caused the ID when using unique identifiers. I wasn't really clear on what this means. What is VS Project? The VS Project extension? I was assuming that was heat. Must be heat. It's not extension, though, right? Uh, well, technically it is, right? Because of the funky way that heat is built. Oh, 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 I see. I see. The VS Project thing inside. Yeah, the, uh, I haven't been inside heat. In very long time on purpose. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would. I guess that wouldn't surprise me. We could toss it three X. See if someone wants to fix it. Uh, I yeah, that code is so twisty. I guess it wouldn't that surprise me. Code is extremely twisty. Port to mono. Last I checked, we which was a while ago, we do run on mono. It's just you need well, all, you need all the Windows APIs to yeah. talk to MSI. So that's the problem. We need wine. Um, 
for the we back. We need end. MSI DLL. Uh, and actually, wait, Winterop. Yeah, no, we're not going to port all the mono. There's way too much work. We're not going to do it. We have native code that runs in there. It's not worth it. So, no. <laughs> it's just not worth it. Even if we did get rid of all our native code, we still would need MSI DLL, and I'm not right. going to write a managed right. implementation of that. No. Add support for files in use in Wix standard BA. Do we not already have a bug open on this? We're looking. All right, it's well. It's tough to... I totally agree. It would be great if someone wrote files in use for Wix standard BA. It should totally handle that correctly. Yeah. Different icon source for bundles, cubicle, and ARP entry. What? I... This, this to me is a is a suspend it's like yeah. yeah really why why would you need yeah, okay yeah meh <laughs> we could suspend it yeah I I, I, I don't uh, it's already we already have enough stuff yeah, yeah you could do it with an icon in it but still you're gonna uh, you just uh, <laughs> ugh. meh all right Remote payload not available as MSU package. Yes. I think this was your manipulation. What? What are you suggesting? So. Yes. Do So there's not enough. I just want to make sure we're not taking anything else. I I don't think we harvest anything out of MSU packages. No. We don't. It's just the ability to... Yep, it's just the ability to... Yeah. Well, I mean, MSU almost makes sense if, you know... We don't do anything. Uh, it's like an XE, so yeah. Yeah, and it's also the thing kind of most likely to... Uh, yeah. So I think putting remote payload back on MSU package is probably a good thing. I agree. I'll even assign it to myself and put it in 3.9. Wow. How nice of you. I am. Pyro needs to be able to build patch patches even if some Wix MSTs contain no changes. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why would you build a patch that has nothing in it? Maybe I don't understand. I have a patch well, A, B, would... and C, products Y and C. Z contains A and C, product Y contains B and C. Oh, I see. So they're not exactly. So they share C. Baselines makes it difficult. If a binary component B changes, update Y. Yes, but it won't contain to Z. Hmm. It's probably just turning off an error, isn't it? Um, well, eh, it might be a little deeper. Right now we error out because this is, you know, not legal in general. Um, but in general? Well, Oh you, yeah, you can't you can't have you can't have zero yeah. transforms, yeah. right? Yeah, you don't want to, and you'd have to make the patch not target Z originally, and then later on target yeah. Z. That, that's I think one of the things they're doing is um, they're doing versionless. They don't validate on version. Uh, anyway, uh, for the most part, yes, it's allowing something that might not work at all. If you get into that state of having, you know, no valid transforms. Well, can we prevent the bad thing? Can we prevent the bad thing and allow the good thing? I don't know. There's actually a whip on this. Yeah, I saw the whip in it because I, I let it through. But yeah. It 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 didn't. It didn't talk about any of the hard problems. It just said, "Here, I should be able to condition out this call, and it will just work." Oh, okay. I you you approved it, so I didn't even look at it. 
Well, um, I, I didn't. Let's be really I clear. Don't. I took the merge, which means the thing is out there. We need to go yeah, talk yeah. about the does it actually work part, which is right, why I right. let the whip through so we could talk about does it even work. Yeah. Um, um, so overall, is there anything wrong with this if you do the right thing? If you do all the right things, it allows you to write a single patch to target Y and C as you start patching A, B, and C. And you would you would do that because uh, because you're. Basically, they they want to they want to they want to target the world. Yep. And just you know throw throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm trying to think if that's a bad thing. Well, that's why you know we required the opt-in. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yes, I, I wouldn't do it by default. I certainly wouldn't, uh, by default, say, hey, look, we found a transform, so we didn't do anything, and good luck figuring out what the heck just happened, uh, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, So we, we, you would definitely have to opt in for this mode that says, I'll ignore transforms to products that have that are empty. Yeah, and, and as Heath points out, you still have to build the transforms. Yeah, yeah. Um, even though they end up empty. He search allows that, right? I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I was asking Heath whether Torch allows the empty transforms. It's just Pyro that's problematic in this oh, yeah, yeah. Torch, weird little case. Torch definitely should. I mean, it would tell you something that you have an empty transform. Okay, maybe it's just a warning. I don't know if it's a warning. It's like, here's your transform. But maybe it should be a warning. <laughs> here's your transform. Nothing's different. You're like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Pyro needs to be able to patch as if some contain no changes. I'm having a hard time saying that this is a horrible thing to do. Yeah, it's a weird thing to do, but I don't think it's horrible. I'm not even sure it's that weird. I, I mean, you could you could imagine setting up from the beginning, going, look, you know, we have these three products; they're almost all the same. We know there's a whole lot of overlap between them. Never mind the fact that you're using patches for all this, and you should probably might be using bundles and things like that. But you know, forget that. Um, and then, and so if. So you set up from the beginning, you basically go, look, I have these three products, I'm just going to build patches from here out. Target all of them, and if the patch applies, it's good. So, I, you know, you're like, yeah, that's what you're doing. It's an interesting way of doing it. You're going to be building transforms for all of your products all the time. Right. You're going to end up with a patch that targets, you know, some set of them. Maybe zero, which at that point it needs to do something intelligent. None of your transforms contained any changes. You get no patch. Um, right? Because yeah, you can't have well, a patch that has no transforms and things like that. And as Steve points out, the, there's an error. It's an error today to do that, and they basically want to turn it into a warning. I don't know who .NET servicing guy is, but I pity him. Yeah, so I'm... I'm I guess I can't, I can't say this is a horrible thing to do. It's I mean, might not be the way I would do it, and certainly it's not the most targeted way to go about doing it, but, you know. It's clearly an adaptation. And with warnings, then at least you'd know, and then we have to error if you build a patch that has no transforms, because um, that, of course, doesn't work. Uh, I take that back. I have never tried applying a patch that has no transforms. Does that work? 
uh, I would guess not. So anyway. So so he that that my understanding is that that whip actually refers to this feature, and this isn't a bug. This is a feature we're looking at here. So I I think that the whip is the implementation detail of this feature. And this isn't a bug. This is a feature. People keep talking like this is a bug request. I'm like, no, it's a feature. And we got, we got feature. that part done. <laughs> feature. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't say that this is a horrible thing to do. So I, I say we just like, it seems reasonable, and then we just need to go make sure that the, the discussion in the whip turns out to be correct, right? Yeah, I agree. That's definitely the next step. All right, cool. So I, I think we let that process run. We can open this. We're in contrast to the the first one we looked at. I'm not sure I, this this is a good feature that we should be taking. I want to talk about it more before we kill it. Where where are we? This feature seems more reasonable. So four three seven five. Mm, not so thrilled about four three eight five. I wouldn't do it, but I'm not against someone. It doesn't seem horrible. Right. 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 Yeah. Cool. Let the process run. All right. Feature request is now open. And we put it in 3x, right? Just to be sure. Yes. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah. Setting com plus MDA not marshable causes exception while set get return. I had to look this up. This is actually the, the new <laughs> managed debugger <laughs> helper, which is, once I knew what MDA meant, I was like, oh, okay. And it's telling us that we have marshalling things wrong, I guess, is what it's telling us. Um... So I say we should take this in 3x, and I'd vote we have Heath look at it at some point. But we're basically safe. Things seem to be working right now, but something could go wrong. Got me. Lots of voodoo there. And that's calm marshalling, which is always crazy magic. So like I said. anyway. So uh, let's put it in 3x. I'm, I someone should look at it. Yep. And if we ever start having problems with strings coming across, we should go, ooh, we should be careful here. But yeah. Yeah, I, I know it's all intentional. We just need to go think about how to make that MDA happy. All right, shifted text area. Description of the area and its code shifted relative to each other. Yeah, this is one where a picture is worth at least a 1,000 words. Because those words didn't parse for me. Nope. Oh my god, look at all these ads. Anyway, um, whoa, what is that? That is we basically allowed two lines in the uh, failure dialogue for the failure message, but it took too long we to should have allowed at least three. Actually, that was that was pretty bad from a, you know, um, internationalization perspective because the English line is or English text is just over, uh, it, it falls into the second line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're supposed to allow for a doubling, so. All right, so we can, a oh, Wixel can fix this though, right? Because they can change the size width, all that kind of of this place. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm torn on what the right fix is here. I, I'm fine be... if we make it bigger too. I mean, you know, as long as it doesn't hurt anything. By default, Hey, look, there's lots of white space. Let's go ahead and use it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's probably what we should do. I'm not against that. Um, so we'll open it in 3x, and someone can go fix this. Yeah. And we'll, let's toss that on the easy bug list somewhere, right? You think? That's pretty easy, right? Absolutely. Once you, once you get around to building all that stuff. All right. Let me. on top of me. We need to create that web page, Bob. The easy list. Yes. Yes, that. I have a installer that downloads and uncompresses its size as 15 gig. Wow. Wow. Install size, do what I want. However, when you set it to that big, you get that message. Oh, the compiler doesn't want it to get that big. Well, and the compiler is not the only person who could, who's complaining. Yeah, because we'd have to get that into a long or whatever and have it all flow down and yada, yada, yada. 
And then there, of course, is the question is we write a reg key with a, ooh, what is that? I guess it's a D word. Yeah, it's it's under, <laughs> it's small enough, barely. Um, the ARP no, is no, in, no, D -word ARP size is in it. kilobytes. I so think. then if we wrote the D word in the ARP entry, then hopefully ARP would show it correctly. Um, yeah. I think, I wonder if we need to make a, a column type of, you know, keyword or whatever we're going to do, you know, because there are many cases where Burns happy with keywords, but of course MSI doesn't have the concept, and we just need to let that through. Um, now this is where you know, <clears throat> we right now we we share the you know Unreal tables share the same limits as real tables, so no, we should be able to create a column table and just make sure that if it ever ends up setting MSI, it errors. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying. Oh, okay. we, I'm just saying right now. Oh yeah, right now. No, that's what I say. That's the feature. So yeah, this is a feature. I I, I totally agree. We should fix all that all the way through. The MSI install size has nothing to do with that. Well, it will because if I remember correctly, Burn will add up all the package install sizes and then. Um, the the bundle will write the size for itself and it will use all the package install sizes. Um, so anyway, yeah, I agree. It's a reasonable feature request. Toss it 3x. I don't think it's breaking. I mean, anybody that has a size now. I guess we would break anybody that was putting a negative size in there. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have allowed that anyway. Yeah. I would be okay with that. My 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 package takes negative two gigs. My ARP entry says I get space back when I have this package. Yeah, you no. could do it. No, you couldn't. You could not install a bundle and take up less space. You I think that you could. <laughs> you, could <laughs> you could put an XE in there that deletes everything. You're right. You could do that. My related uh, bundle, I'm just going to go uninstall whatever I find. I don't like Office. I'll just uninstall that. Function failed. Figured out. I need to call summary in from close. Then no errors would appear. Okay. Uh, but what? I'm confused. He's not calling summary info. Doc. He's not calling summary info. The bug is if you use consolidate by itself. What? I'm I'm really confused. I am too. Um, it, but it does. I mean, something's not going right here. Yeah. So it's DTF, right? It's not tagged as DTF, but yeah. So it's DTF, and we can go. <sighs> yep. We can go. I don't know. It could be open in three X. I assume it could get fixed in there. Something's going awry. I don't even know what consolidate does. Um, yeah, it's supposed to like resave everything, recompress, blah blah blah. Uh, so it sounds like it has some issues. Yeah, it's supposed to be one of those high-level things. Eh. Sounds like it has bugs in it. Sounds like it does. Could be fixed in 3x. I assume it could be fixed in 3x. I mean, if it doesn't work now, it shouldn't work any worse. So. Right. All right. So if we do this, we're down to da -da -da -da, one, which is wow, that was fast, Bob. Well done. Thank you. Cool, cool, and cool. All right. So. Onwards to questions and comments. Heath is talking about whether there needs a bug open on every change, and we don't need a bug on every change unless there's value in having a bug open on it, right? And he had some build process tweak that I don't know if there's a lot of value in opening a bug on a build process tweak. So, no, you don't have to do that. Um, we're, I'm a little behind on pull requests. I mean, we didn't have a meeting last week, so we're just kind of behind right now. Um, 
I'm a little behind on the build server too. So anyway, I mean, we'll, we'll, we need to get through the pull request. Sean has a, a thing in there that we need to get through too. So um, it's on my list of things to do. It's just not going to happen this week because the whole family's been sick and I've not been making progress on anything and it's just not going to happen. And I'm not even feeling terribly well, as <laughs> you may be able to tell from my voice. So yes, we'll get through it all. It's just kind of a mess. Um, yeah. I lost power for 45 hours, so I was actually what? in the middle of reviewing your change. Wow. Yeah, that sucks. Wow. Uh, that, wow. That's impressive. I take it your UPSs didn't last that long. Um, oh, no, they did not. <laughs> um, all right. So Eric had a question about MPF and all that kind of stuff, votive and MPF. Um, why don't, because he's prepped himself. Do you have audio, Eric? I'm going to unmute you and find out. Yes? No? Maybe? Eric? Yes. Hey! So you had a question about MPF. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I, I was looking at originally at that, that, uh, fix for votive um, for, <laughs> for referencing the uh, VSTO oh, that, yeah. uh, projects. Yes. Um, and then I got into votive and realized it's really confusing. Um, Visual and, Studio packages are fun. Yeah, they really are. And um, so, you know, I kept looking at it and I'm like, okay, this is going to be a mess. The, the fa- the longer we go, it's going to get even worse because MP- there's a new MPF for every Visual Studio version. Um, and the Visual Studio versions are coming at e- every year now. So, I mean, we're going to get really far behind, um, even more than we are. So I started looking into this, and, uh, it, you know, I was curious as to what other other open source project systems do. And I looked at the, at the uh, Python one. And the mm-hmm. Python, they have forked. MPF to make it cross version. So you have to still build separate uh, packages potentially, um, you know, for uh, significant differences. Like I think you have to do it for um, 2010, but you can you 2010 and then um, 2000 or 2012 and 2013 are the same version, but you can you, it's just a build. Yeah, Bob um, looking at all this. Bob was yes. working on this. And that's what I found out last okay. night. All right. But I also emailed them because apparently it's being used, as Bob had mentioned, by Node, and they said it's being used by a couple other uh, teams. And I was wondering, like, why don't they just move this into a separate project? Because this clearly has value for multiple. Yeah, multiple I think we asked them that projects. one time before, back when it was just Python, but they were, you know, they were they were just they were Python. hesitant to do it now as well. Um, <laughs> okay. Because they, they, they don't want to support they, MPF. Nobody's supporting MPF well. I mean, not even no. Visual Studio. I mean, they just throw a bunch of code over and say, here, this might work. Yeah. I mean, they they said that they're not necessarily opposed to the concept, that they're just worried about having to maintain it. That Because in also the issue that they say they make lots of changes to it over time, and they don't want to have to have a, you know, another integration process. But, I mean, this, this seems like a really obvious thing because it's being used by so many people at this point. Um, you know, very large projects being Node and Python, as well as they said other people outside. So I'm I'm hoping that I can try to get them to go in that direction. But I I didn't even know if this was something that you had thought of. Apparently it is. So um, yeah, Bob was trying to figure that out before. Yeah. Well, for the same reason, it's like who who's doing anything with that MPF project system? Um, it's impossible because you, you can't keep up. Well, the big problem I have with the MPF that Microsoft throws over the wall every every RTM is that they they make breaking changes. Yes. And and you know I, I'm I actually used to work on the Visual Studio SDK team, but that was ten years ago, and you know man, it's just like trying to trying to update Votive with the new stuff in 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 the Microsoft MPF. I'm just like, man, you know, I don't have the context to do it. The the Python stuff, the, the shared project, that actually made more sense to me because I think the changes they made, I don't know when they forked, but 
the changes they made seemed to make more sense and it looked easier to you know like like one of the problems with um, the Microsoft version is that uh, Votim ends up with a bunch of, of just like template stuff for very basic things. It looks like in the shared project they have a lot more of those things in the in the library, mm -hmm. and we could just basically get rid of them, you know, from Votive. Absolutely. No, they 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 said they forked um, on the 2008 version, and then they've then okay. they've merged in changes since then as okay. needed. That makes sense because that's that's the version that Votive basically started at. Yeah. So um, at so they've done the same thing that we've done. The difference is, I believe, they have more people doing oh, yes. Visual Studio integration work than we do because we lost our Visual Studio integration person back, I don't know how long ago, a long time ago, and nobody... Well, several of them. Yeah, several of them. I mean, the, the few that we've had come through, um, we haven't had anybody that's wanted to work in that space deeply. So Wix, honestly, was using MPF before a lot of these bigger projects, um, but those bigger projects are only about their project system. Like... The Python tools is a good example. They're about the Visual Studio integration, and then there's a Python implementation they use, right, <laughs> that they can use, where we're about the compiler linker and all that kind of stuff, and we provide the Visual Studio integration. So we've lost the half of the team, which was never half, that worked on the Visual Studio integration. So anyway, uh, doesn't surprise me that we're where we are, and I we're not going to get anywhere until someone tries to help like Bob move the MPF stuff forward and and Bob only gets so far before I don't know losing I activation start, energy yeah, I start weeping and it's understandable no I, I mean I'm I'm happy to help with it I mean because yeah. I, so, I so, so I would say if there was an MPF like if you said we need to move voted forward and to do so we need to take a new MPF we'd be like okay okay <laughs> yeah, now, no, I think we wait, absolutely that would be a non-small issue, project, and we'd yeah. have to go figure out how to do it and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But it'd be like, yeah, I guess that doesn't surprise us because it's been a problem for a long time. In fact, we have a large number of votive bugs that we've all kind of chalked up to, probably due to our old MPF. Mm -hmm. and yeah, definitely. I, so and the, the Python version appealed to me not only because, you know, it, well, now I understand why the code is closer to where we started from in votive, mm -hmm. so it's you know, probably more familiar, but primarily because if, you know, Python and Node, they're, you know, kind of, they get a nice bit of highlighting from DevDiv. Um, so my assumption is that the bug fixes that they've merged in are going to fix a lot of the things that we were told were fixed in later versions of, of well, the... Well, my understanding is that yeah. there's actually a Microsoft employee working on Python tools, so... Um, I think there are multiple Microsoft employees working on it, it sounds like. Oh, I don't know about Python tools. There might be multiple on Node. I thought there's only one guy on Python tools. Maybe anyway, there's one. But, yeah. But, you know, it's like, all right, cool. I mean, that's more than Wix has had in five years. I mean, that that's going to make it a whole lot easier because, I mean, they're going to be doing most of the work on keeping up. Right. And they, you know, they have a full-time employee that's going to be working on that, whereas we obviously don't. So, I mean, we, if we can just, you know, kind of leech off that, mm -hmm. so to speak, it'd be, it'd be helpful. Again, I mean, Bob, Bob investigated this. It was totally a reasonable option. It just doesn't mm -hmm. exist right now. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I, will, so, I, will, I will move forward on it then and, yeah. and see what I can come up with. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's that or we continue to maintain our own and, well, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a good plan going forward. Well, it, it's, a, it's a completely reasonable plan. We're just not making much progress. So yes. it's like <laughs> we're not going to make more progress than we are now, I, I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly not faster. So anyway, yes, yep. whatever there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so that's that. Any other questions, comments? No, he's been tossing stuff out as we've been going along. Um, so if so, I think we'll call it good. It's a little bit longer than I'd hoped. I was hoping we could get these down to a half hour, but you know, we skipped last week. So, tail heavy. Uh, you got anything else, Bob? Uh, no. I'm I'm uh, working on a blog post that's going to talk about some options for for Wix 3.9. Um. So as far as like the timing, yeah, um, I kind of wanted to get that you know out more widely distributed than the 
the folks who come online at this time and and or watch the uh, the videos on YouTube. Yep, fair enough. And I I just need to dig out, and then we'll get things kind of going back on track here. So anyway, um, I think that's it. We'll call this a wrap. And 45 minutes. That's not too bad, right? So. No. Uh, Hopefully we'll be back on schedule next week, assuming other things don't go crazy. And um, I guess we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.